<laughs> You're not a veteran. Good afternoon and welcome to our land use meeting of August the 19th, 2021. We are going to start uh, with the invocation by Reverend Dr. Capers of Rogers Community United Methodist Church, followed by uh, Commissioner Bellamy with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd stand, please. That was a mouthful. Let us pray. Lord of all creation, we bless you because you are the Lord over our homes, our cities, our state, nation, and world. Heavenly Father, we pause at this time to pray for these Manatee County Commissioners as you give them responsibility to watch and guide over the county they serve. Lord, just as you told Prophet Ezekiel that you have made him watchman for the people of Israel, I pray for our commissioners that they will be godly watchmen and watchwomen over your creation. And even though they may feel doubt or uncertainty during these challenging times, help them to keep their eyes fixed on you. Lord, grant them wisdom and keep them, help them to remember that, that, that it is you who gives wisdom because from your mouth comes knowledge and understanding. This is our prayer. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. 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 Reverend, thank you. That was wonderful. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, do we have any updates to the agenda? Uh, yes, madam. Nice to have you up here with us too, Mr. Wenzel. Thank you. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yes. yes, Madam Chair, we do. Um, we have two changes, uh, the following changes. Item number one, LDCT 20-03, Ordinance 21-11, County Initiated Land Development Code Text Amendment for accessory dwelling units. Uh, we have an additional letter of support, a co public comment letter. And for item number two, L3, Partnership, Gamble Creek Village Plan Amendment, PA, 18-03, Ordinance 21-17, text, text Amendment PA-1804, Ordinance 21-18, Map Amendment, and so a text and map amendment legislative item, we have a request from the applicant for a continuance to September 16th, 2021. All right, thank you, sir. We'll go ahead now and open for future agenda items, public comment. We will have 30 minutes. Uh, each person will be limited to three minutes. If the 30-minute time period has been exhausted, the board will entertain any remaining comments near the end of the meeting with the same three-minute per person time limitation. Can I make one? Yeah. Can I make one? Everybody's worried about it. Is there a way we can do the continuance for item number two sure. first since they've got an attorney here and it's a pretty <laughs> quick process as opposed to opening it up? I mean, this is a, a five minute. We can do that. Um, Yes, Madam Chair, we can just call it change in orders of the day, and the chair announces. I, I knew, yeah, first. I knew we could do that. I just had already called on public comment. So, but let's move on down. We'll wait on that. Let's move on down to item number two. Chair, I was on board about that. I was on item number two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was going to bring that up. I was also going to ask the applicant since twice now it's been more or less. I know it's not working. Wait, now it is. It is now. I I. Um, wanted to know since twice now we've continued this and it's been our um, because of us and not the applicant so if there was a time sooner that they wanted to bring this like a special day I think we should at least consider it if the applicant is okay with it I did call the applicant because it's not a quasi-judicial and I don't know if they're okay with the 16th but I said you know this has been our fault twice that we've delayed this so the first time was advertising 
and now um, he wants a full board. So, you know, I would just ask him if it's, this date is okay or does he want to do it sooner? And if so, can we accommodate? Attorney Shank, would you like yeah, to respond? Madam Chair, I recommend we stick with the September 16th date. Because? That, because we don't know when there'll be a full board. There were some uncertainties that with one correct. commissioner. And this way we don't have to re-advertise at the expense of the applicant. It's cost effective or we've got a date. And before that time, we'll have more information. I was going to say just that. We don't know uh, for sure when Commissioner Van Ostenbridge will be back. So, and that's the reason for this continuance. So uh, let's make sure. But if, if he should come back sooner, uh, Attorney Shank, can we bring it back up to you uh, in maybe an email and you could yeah, look notice? into it? Uh, two weeks' notice, notice yeah. Uh, it. So well, is it two weeks' notice that you have to have? To advertise? It would have to be advertised 10 days. Before. 10 days. Okay, well, that helps a little bit. All right. Who wants to read this into, uh, into record so we can go ahead and move forward? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Madam Hold Chairman, on. I just want I just wanted to say it's it just, and I'm sorry, uh, Madam Chairman, that I know you, you don't want anyone to. <laughs> I know you're disgusted, but I just want to say it was not, it's not the board's fault. The, it's not the board's fault. It's the applicant's uh, request. So, and we're honoring that. So I just want to say that. It's not the county's fault. So I, I disagree with what Commissioner Whitmore said. And by the way, it's not me that might be a little disgusted. But anyway, That's would you okay. please read it into record now so we can move forward? Yes. Thank you. Number, okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, Item yes. number two, L3 Partnership, Gamble Creek Village Plan Amendment, PA 1803, Ordinance 2117, Text Amendment, and PA 1804, Ordinance 2118, a map amendment. Um, this is for Gamble Creek Village um, project. I don't know that I have to read the whole ordinance in. No. Well, just to clarify, Madam Chair, it's yes. ordinance 2117 and 2118. Right. All right, thank you. So um, we're going to move then for a continuance. I do need to open it for public comment. Um, it will come back before us uh, at this point, September the 16th. Hit your button, please. Commissioner Satcher? Do we need to do a, do I need to move and make that yes. motion? Yes, you do. Okay, I move to continue the public hearing to September 16th, 2021 at 1.30 p.m. or soon thereafter. Second. All right, we do have a motion to continue uh, from Commissioner Satcher with a second by Commissioner Bellamy. I need to open this to public comment. Is there anyone that would like to come forward? Any phone calls? Okay, I'm gonna close public comment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It is approved uh, to be continued six to zero. Did you want to say anything? Thank you. You're welcome, Mark, anytime. Sorry. For. All right, going back to item, uh, we're going to go back to citizens' comments on future agenda items. I do have a few cards here. Uh, the first one is Ken Piper, followed by Andra Griffin. Good morning, I'm Ken Piper, Manatee County citizen. Um, this concerns uh, staff reviews and the contents. Uh, several months ago, it might have been uh, a year ago perhaps, um, it was indicated that uh, the staff should include pros and cons in their recommendations. And that was really good, but I, I do remember the last one that I saw had nothing about cons in it. So um, maybe it would be a better idea that uh, um, we, let every, or we let the public know what the true costs of developments are. In other words, it isn't the impact fees that are the true cost of development. It's everything else that comes after that, such as wear and tear on the roads, new roads, uh, cost of destruction of the wetlands, uh, sewers, uh, cost of stormwater. Um, I think that uh, if these costs were calculated, that it would be very beneficial to the public because eventually we're all going to have to end up paying for it. 
Uh, right now, you know, we have a bunch of new homes in, we have a bunch of uh, new roads in, and everything looks real nice. But in 10 or 15 years, uh, things are going to happen. And uh, specifically, I'd like to address the matter of sewers. Right now, sewers, at least as far as I remember reading the, uh, the last proposed uh, impact fee study, sewers are not included in impact fees. And I've been told that uh, you can't include uh, sewers, but from my reading of the statute, and specifically uh, Florida Statute 318101, subsection 11, sub-subsection A, you are permitted to do that. So I would request that before the impact fee study is, uh, is approved that uh, uh, we, in, we have them include sewers in the cost of that because eventually we are going to have to pay for that. I mean, I, I don't know what the capacity of the sewers is now, but uh, one day uh, we will be at that limit. And I'd just like to make uh, one other uh, comment, and that concerns uh, Florida Statute 120.25. That gives this board the authority to um, appoint representatives to uh, uh, represent individuals that are interested as a group, not an organized group, but as several citizens in uh, uh, appearing before this board on development matters. Uh, it's my opinion, and go ahead and check with legal counsel, but I think you can appoint an attorney to represent the citizens, and we really need to level the playing field here with this uh, development stuff, and I think that's one way that, uh, that could be done. And again, that's Florida Statute Section 120.25. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have Andrew Griffin and then Glenn Dubalina. Wait for the clock to reset. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, Andrew Griffin, Manatee County. So I'm just going to read a prepared um, statement here. So we would like more accountability and transparency from the uh, redevelopment economic opportunity and de uh, and department directed by Geraldine Lopez. With the last funds of $350,000 to Community Solutions 360 now tops over a million dollars in interest-free loan to just one, again, just one nonprofit organization. These mortgages are secured by property and paid back at closing. We cannot find where the money has been fully paid back. Um, records requests have been sent to the closing department um, for the redevelopment and economic opportunity and has failed to provide the closing statements. And um, if and when um, any of the already $700,000 in loan are repaid back, why are they not recycled into uh, no interest loans of other nonprofits like Trinity Without Borders, who has self-funded her entire build without any assistance from the redevelopment and economic opportunity? She struggled the entire time with funding and now going on two years without any assistance with zero interest loans when in fact the redevelopment and opportunity department uh, was flushed with hundreds of thousands of dollars from Community Solutions 360 who just last month was funded another $350,000 which makes it over a million dollars. One company has received interest free from taxpayer funds. In 2017, I'm going off script here, but in 2017 this board approved for pro for profits to get some money or be able to bid on some of these things, and that has not been um, done yet. And I'm sorry, this is a lack of transparency and accountability um, of the taxpayers' money. This is red flags. I mean, literally alarm bells are going off, and I spoke about this when we were giving the $350,000 to them. I was totally against this. There was something wrong with the process. And nobody has brought forth a workshop, a work session or any of any kind to explain this issue. Um, you know, I try not to beat up people too much, but when you start seeing this stuff, and, and we're going to go, I'm just going to go ahead and put the other slide, the other slide up. But whenever we start seeing stuff like this through records request, I mean, it's hard not to think that there's cronyism going on in our in our bureaucracy. And I'm sorry, it, it's not an, it's not a personal attack on anybody. It's just an observation. 
And it's so much so, much so that um, I expect somebody from this board to start looking into this stuff and getting back to the people of this county to explain why one company, one nonprofit alone, is entitled to over a million dollars of taxpayer money interest-free and why that money, when it's paid back, is not recycled. In my last 10 seconds, we can't even prove that the entire amount that they've received has been paid back when they've sold the property. So it's very concerning to me, and I hope this board takes this seriously. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually the one that made that motion, so I remember it well. Mr. Jubilina, you are next. For the record, Glenn Jablina, and uh, you know I, I kind of mirror what Andrew said on that. So um, we went to see this movie uh, in Tampa the other day. I, I would suggest you all look at it, take a look at it. Mosaic is no friend of ours. They never have been. They never will be. So um, again, you know, going after the seed money that is supposed to be repaid by a nonprofit. You know, I've been on the ad advisory boards. Uh, uh, for a bit, and we can never get a straight answer. We're just looking for a straight answer. That's all we want. And why would we not want to recycle that money for profit builders to build in these incremental lots? So that's my spin on it. Uh, the vets, the housing for the vets, heard good news today. Thank you very much. So uh, we're moving forward with that. Uh, the other thing is I didn't see anything for renewable energy in there on the, on the sweep or on the presentation. You know, I, I beat this horse a long time, and now the numbers are really coming in. You heard our administrator. We can get money at 0.29%. Solar, FP, by an FP&L statement, is a 10% return. So why would we not bond out at less than 1% and keep the 9% for, for the citizens? And in fact, after 10 years, then you own the system outright, and you're getting free energy for the next 15 years. I don't know what's so hard to understand that money, those numbers, but you got a perfect facility on Televast with the roof angle just perfect. Do a demonstration project there. Impact, impact fees, I think they should be waived altogether. Instead <coughs> of dipping into livable manatee, you should just <coughs> waive them. And the other thing I want to bring up is, you know, judicial notice. When I was sparring at the courts, we'd put stuff in the docket, and it was, it was evident that, you know, if you handed in a white paper, it was fact. If today's Thursday the 19th, it's fact. Why on earth do I have to come in here every time and hand in a sheet when we know, in fact, that uh, I am the spokesman for the Affordable Housing Board and that we should adopt those practices? For me to come in here and say, oh, well, I have to bring another one, which I did hand in, it's in the record. The clerk has it. It's, that's evidence in fact. Why can't you just take it as that? It's a bad policy. It should be, it should be removed. I, I agree for the new people coming in. Yeah, bring in, bring, in your, bring in your signatures. But a guy like me and a few other folks that come out regularly, evidence in fact. Take judicial notice of it. It's good practices. So that tells me I can get 10 minutes. That tells me I can get 10 minutes. That tells me can't I get 10 minutes. And I got the tea party, but they changed their name. I don't have that yet. So I would uh, strongly suggest you change that policy. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to come forward on future agenda items? Please come up to the podium, state your name. You'll have three minutes. Hello, my name is Kevin Heisey. I live in... Uh, Bradenton, Northwest Bradenton, Palmasola Park area. Um, I'm the president of our neighborhood association, and I've been starting to track what's going on with uh, ADUs. I've, been, I've researched it, and that, seen, it that will be coming up. That's oh, not this, our, now, that's this section. Today. Good to talk on that now. This is just future stuff. That's right. Not I apologize. It'll be up in just a moment. Okay. It's all, you can it's come back. Two minutes away. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak on future agenda items? No phone calls? All right, I'm going to close public comment now. Okay. Would you like to read in one appetizer? Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. 
Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you. I just want to thank uh, the citizens for commenting. And um, Mr. Piper, just uh, so you understand, there is, um, there's not an impact fee for sewer, but there's a facility investment fee, which is, uh, for all practical purposes, it's, it's an impact fee. It's just called something different. That's all. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. And that's what I was going to say. It's a FIF, it's called. And that's what you'll see on all your documents. It's like an impact fee, but like she said, you have to pay. It's facility impact. It includes sewer, water, and all that. Commissioner <laughs> Cruz. <laughs> I knew it. So. Yeah. Uh, just real quick to Glenn. Uh, I'll make it quick. Uh, I, I agree with the whole nonprofit thing. I, I said it when that came up. That's why I voted against it when, when CS360 came up. I, I don't think anything should be steered directly to Nonprofits, I think it should all be bid out properly because that's how we're best using our, our, our funds. And it, it is a little concerning that every single one of these all go to the exact same company because it's right. not the only nonprofit in this town. As for the, the bonds, though, just to be clear, and this is neither here nor there, but you can't go out and just get 0.29%. That, that was a, line, a short term line of credit for a specific purpose that we're going to be paying back. You, you can't go out and get, we can't bond at 0.29%. We're bonding closer to like 1.6 to 2, depending on where, where rates start going. So it's a little higher than a 0.29. It's, it's a little different, but that was just clarification. Any other commissioners have anything to add before we move forward? Commissioner Satcher. Thank you, Madam Chair. I did on the issue of impact fees. I have been having, uh, I wanted to bring up some thoughts. First of all, I understand the law as far as a developer. If there's an inadequate road, you can't make a developer fix an entire road. I understand that. Um, what I wouldn't want to see, what I wouldn't want our, you know, us to be a part of, is let's imagine a scenario where you have two inadequate roads that come together, and then you turn down one of them, and you drive however many miles on an inadequate road, and then you get to a development. And for the developer to be able, if he were, I don't know if this is the way we run it, let's hope we don't, to where they can trade their impact fees for making their entrance, you know, six lanes across and a beautiful this and a absolutely perfect. That's exactly what we do. Absolutely perfect and have zero money actually going in to uh, address other things that are impacted by that development. So I am a, I'm, I'm a pro-growth commissioner, um, but I do believe in smart growth. And so I want us just to be aware of that. If that is something that's happening, we need to uh, definitely look after the, the taxpayers and uh, the people of this county as, as closely as we can. Thank you. Good comment. All right, we're gonna go ahead now. Lisa, can you read? Um... <clears throat> Item number one is LD, LDCT-20-03, Ordinance 2111, formerly known as Ordinance 20-15. This is a county-initiated land development code text amendment addressing accessory dwelling units within the land development code. Um, and this item is on presentations upon request, but I think um, Bill will summarize. And um, so Bill O'Shea is here for staff. Hello, Bill. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Commissioners. For the record, Bill O'Shea with Building and Development Services. So this is the adoption hearing for the accessory dwelling unit ordinance. Um, we were before you on June 17th, and at that time, I believe we had addressed all commissioner concerns, and the language was where everyone felt comfortable. And Bill, if I could just interrupt you, Maybe we should ask if we need a full presentation or not, commissioners. He's not giving a full presentation. Um, I can if you'd like, but That's I do what have I'm a asking, summary. Bill. Thank you. No. Okay. He's, no. Okay. He's just giving. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Okay, you're welcome. Um, so on June 17th, um, everyone was happy with the language. Um, we got really no opposition from the public since the June 17th meeting. We did have a couple commissioner questions that I believe were were addressed. We also received another letter of support, and I have had a lot of phone calls from interested residents that would like, was interested in the progress of the ordinance and is looking forward to building a unit on their property. Um, so just to recap how we left the ordinance or the draft ordinance, the final draft ordinance 
allows for ADUs and it allows a maximum square footage of 750 square feet for all residential zoning districts except for A and A1. In A and A1, you can go up to 1,000 square feet or 80% of the, of the primary dwelling unit, whichever is less. Um, there is a prohibition for ADUs in the Whitfield Residential Overlay and the Bayshore Gardens Park and Recreation District. Uh, the ordinance provides for rear yard reduced setbacks in exchange for height restrictions and privacy improvements. It requires one dedicated parking space. Um, in the A zoning district only, a mobile home can be used and we've made changes to the mobile home section of the land development code to allow for that use. And it requires a notice to buyer be recorded at the applicant's expense indicating either the ADU or the primary structure must be owner occupied. Um, that is basically all I was going to provide you with so I can answer any questions that you might have um, or we can hear from the public. Okay, thanks Bill. And, and commissioners, the reason I ask if anyone wanted a full presentation because you know, every commissioner does have the right to have that if they want it. So it was a question that needed to be asked. Commissioner Whitmore, you are on the board. Um, yes, this has been something I've been working on for also 10 years. <laughs> and this guy back here, um, we agree on this 100%. Um, and the reason why everybody, and, and it's been brought to the new board, what, two, three times now? Yeah. And it was because we started out at 350 square feet. You know, and then we just start out as a mother-in-law apartment. They go, well, you could use it for short-term rentals. Neighbors came down, freaked out. We were going to have, you know, God forbid, renters co, you know, rent something. And then we came and gave a more realistic picture how much it cost to build one of these. And it took years to keep going. Then, then Whitfield came and Bayshore came. So that's why it's taken so long. But um, when it's time, I would like to make the motion. That's all. I have no comments. Any other commissioners? Want to speak? All right, we'll go ahead and open it to public comment. I have several cards. First one is Glenn Jubilina. Second is Ken Piper. And the third is Andrew Griffin. You'll each have three minutes. <coughs> State your name, you'll have three minutes. Thank you. Please. <laughs> Glenn Jablina, so I get 10 minutes. Where's your letter, sir? It's in there. I haven't received one. It's in the second page, and she has three copies of it. Um, did you get it, Madam Clerk? <clears throat> Mr. Glue, Jubilina, really, you need to give it to the clerk next time, okay? Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. I'll give it to you this time, but that's it. Okay, so um, it is there, and it's in your packet as well. Thank you very much. We're not in our packet. Looking for it, yes. Madam Chair, this is. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Turn this you is on. Going to be representing the own the county's own affordable housing advisory committee. It's a little bit unusual. I mean, uh, yeah. Outside groups can get. Uh, Madam Chairman, as, as I sit on that advisory committee, and I adore Glenn Gibellina, um, and I appreciate this, uh, that was a one-time grant that the committee gave you. It was not carte blanche. For, it, was, it was carte blanche. We have a new board. Well, we have a new committee. It, well, guess what? I'm vice chair, but now uh, I'm, I, I'm I, chair. I'm not going to argue the point. It's up okay. to the chairman. All right. uh, let, let me go. Let, let me say this. No. Oh, wait. Oh. Uh-uh. Commissioner Cruz, you're next. I want to make a motion to allow Mr. Jubilina 10 minutes to speak. You don't need a motion, but second. I'll second it. I'm proposing okay. it. Yeah, I just want to get through it. And just, you don't need nothing motion. against no. nobody on I know. Let's just move forward. So we have a motion to Wasted approve. Wasted five minutes. To let Mr. I keep wanting to say commissioner for some reason. I don't know. The eighth commissioner. Uh, Mr. Jubilina to speak for 10 minutes by Commissioner Cruz with a second by oh. Commissioner Bellamy. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Go. Thank you. I put a lot of work in this project, so I appreciate the, the additional time. And for the record. Uh, but, Glenn, yes. that being said, you're going to need to talk to the board. 
And and it is one of our own committees, so that's right. that's a question there too. Okay, so but, you know. but for the record, I did hand in New Pierce Community with 22 signatures. Okay. I also handed in the Federation with the half a dozen uh, signatures that I represent those two boards as well. Okay, for well, the each one we need a letter. The they're, yeah. they're there. Go, they're please, go. take um, your 10 Madam minutes. Madam Chair, he did submit those items. But I'm not allowed to say, oh, he submitted us so he can get 10 minutes. It's up to the board. It's up to you as the yeah, chair to do that. You need to give that to the person when you're filling out the card Already to speak, four. please. So please, go <laughs> ahead. It hasn't started yet. Okay. Okay. So um, go to the next page. I'm being nice. So there's the letter. Go to the next page. So ADUs, we all know how ARP feels about it. This is a home run for our community. I'm so thankful that we're finally at this point. Uh, you know, in, in all the concerns that I believe we've addressed, and I just want to reiterate two things. The city of Bradenton has had it on the books for 10 years. No problems. The second big thing is owner-occupied. We're not, we're not giving these to investors. You have to live in one of the units. So the, that safety level of concern for the neighborhood goes up tremendously. If you're living in that house and you're renting to someone in the backyard and you got kids, you're gonna watch who you rent to. So I think all the safety valves are in place. I, there should be no concerns. And it's expensive to build. It's 200 bucks a square foot. You're not gonna get anybody in here building one of these for 40 or 50 grand, it ain't happening. So someone's gonna make a concerted effort and they're gonna get a quality renter, hopefully at an affordable price. Now, let's talk about tiny homes. Uh, these, we need to move forward in ADUs with the tiny homes in, in coordination. This is the next big thing. The ADUs are gonna be a home run at 750 square feet because one, it will give the maximum uh, benefit to that homeowner who's trying to offset their rent, their mortgage, by getting additional rent. So that, that's a big plus. The tiny homes are coming in anywhere between 230 and 399, 400 feet, and Mr. O'Shea can certainly vouch for that on the park models. But we need to get uh, incremental lots, higher density, forgive some of the parking, and uh, you know, there's RVs all over town that are sitting there, and we don't make them code compliant with hurricane tie downs. We have RV parks that people come for a couple of months during hurricane season. There's no safeguards there. So I don't buy this thing well. They're not to code and all this. I say if they can afford to live there and move it, then we can do that. So let's talk about of, of, the, uh, of the ADUs and the tiny houses. Energy and environment, home run. Homelessness, I've talked about this before. We should address the homelessness. This may be an opportunity to do that. An emergency transition housing. We have zero. We have a moratorium coming up here in six weeks. October 3rd, out the window. You're gonna see a lot of evictions. These safeguards should be set in place. You know, we're, we're the transitional housing for the vets, we're moving that forward. That's a godsend, but there are a lot of other folks out there, single moms. 830, let me repeat, 830 students are homeless in Manatee County. One of the richest counties in the country, if not the state, and we got 830 homeless students. Um, economic development, the zoning, houses, big benefits. You've got the packet, look it over. Let's talk about the missing middle. This is where, you know, I'm from Chicago, so you can look at some of these, these row houses and stuff. And you have large estates, and then you have the missing middle. You'll have a similar on the facade end of it look like that single dwelling, but it may have four or five apartments in it. That's the direction we need to go on some of these infill lots. This is a home run. Nobody's doing it. We're still doing urban sprawl. You know, in 20 years, those, those, those malls will be vacant. So we need to start thinking about the missing middle. And everybody, everybody benefits, again, more affordable housing to smaller incremental lots. Here's a couple of examples. You've got uh, multiple units next to a large Victorian house. You, you, you go down that street, you can't tell the difference, but you're providing 
more affordable housing units. And at the end of the day, that's, that's where we want to be. Uh, the duplex, same way. You know, from the street, you got two doors next door, similar roof line, similar height. You cannot tell the difference. You know, in, in Oregon, it, they, they just passed it. Anybody can put a duplex on any residential lot to ease some of the housing. But we can do it professionally, aesthetically, enhancing the neighborhood as well. And the mixed use, the one on the bottom, <laughs> that's a home run. I would love to see that. Even, even in, in areas that are off, off the main drag. You go to these larger communities, you go in a block or two, you'll find a bar or a little candy store, you know, and people living upstairs. That's how they make their living. We need to start, and, that, and that's gonna be part of the zoning and mindset that this board should, should, should take a look at. Form-based code, home run. City of Bradenton has it. George and I talked about it. Maybe it's too big for the county. But again, changing a neighborhood to match the neighborhood. You don't go in there and say, okay, we're going to put in you know, a five-story apartment building next to two residential houses. It's the perception that form-based code allows you to do. If you look at Bill Isley in his little pocket community, that's a home run. Form-based code allowed that. And we can do that with the, with the ADUs as well. So co-housing, I got to tell you, I lived in co-housing. It's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. We need to be moving in this direction and changing some of the codes. Pocket neighborhoods, big fan. I'm a big fan. I'll tell you why. Most of you folks up there can probably... Count on one hand, your best friends. How nice would that be to have your best friends live in one square block with you? That's what pocket communities do. That's for sure, that's what co-housing does. So we need to start, start looking in that direction. More community with spaces we already have. In conclusion, it will take a collaborative effort by our county staff, community, and others to move forward to these alternatives way of living. I believe our community is ready for it and we embrace it with open arms. Seven, several demonstration projects should be considered and applied. In the coming months, our board will bring forth recommendations within this presentation and other ideas as well. The doors will be open for those bold enough to knock, and I'm knocking. And uh, I thank you for your time. A little Bible quote here I'm very, very familiar with and I like. Let us not grow weary of doing good. Mm. <laughs> for the due season we will reap if we do not give up. Galatians. So that's my presentation. Thank you for the additional time. I only used six and a half minutes, seven minutes, seven and a half minutes. And uh, long time, Carl, long time coming. So thank you so much. Here's my two cents. And uh, I'll hand that in for the record. Thank you so much. Ken Piper and Andrea Griffin, and then Max Brandon. Brandon. Hi, Ken Piper again, Manatee County. Um, I'm sorry that uh, I wasn't in on this from the beginning, but two days ago I started reading the 600 pages that are in your packet, and I only got through 250 of them. Uh, but the one thing that jumped out to me are exceptions. We have an exception for Whitfield. We have an exception for Bayshore Gardens. Uh, we have a di disparate treatment between uh, agriculture and, and other residential areas. Uh, we have mobile homes with no, uh, no overhangs on them uh, for, for the agricultural district. Now, what that tells me is that we're bringing in a bunch of old mobile homes because the old mobile homes didn't have the overhangs. It's just the new ones that have the overhangs. And some of these uh, are, are so old that you pull them apart when you move them. And definitely after people have been living in them, you, you pull them apart. So for the life of me, I can't figure out why mobile homes, and this reminds me of the area that I came from in Ohio. If you go to the southern part of my county, these things are all over the place, and they're exactly what I told you. They're so old that they cannot be moved. Um, 
I don't know if, if you uh, waive the impact fees or not, but if that's the intention, the only thing that you're doing is placing the burden on the rest of us. Uh, somebody's going to have to pay those impact fees one way or another, and so it will probably be the taxpayer again. Um, and the, the problem that I have with the exceptions is as soon as you start making exceptions, somebody's going to say, well, uh, I want to move, move a mobile home in, in my backyard, and I don't live in an, an agricultural area. Why, are, why do you let them do it, and why don't you let me do it? So then you're immediately uh, opening yourself to an attack that there was no reasonable basis for any of these exceptions. So I think it would be a good idea to explain to, uh, to the rest of us whose uh, uh, home values may be affected as to just exactly why you're making all these uh, exceptions. Uh, last night I tried to find some figures on, on the homeless problem in this country. Um, the, uh, the Census Bureau seemingly can't get uh, their act together, but there's somewhere between 500,000 and 600,000 uh, homeless in the country. And vacant housing, there's somewhere between 13 million and 17 million vacant homes. Uh, a lot of those are HUD homes. For instance, from anything I could figure out, Manatee County alone has 250 HUD homes in foreclosure, and it's a total of 374 homes altogether. So there are federal programs to take care of this. Uh, uh, Glenn mentioned uh, kids that, uh, that don't have uh, uh, a place. There is a specific federal Thank program you, for the kids. Thanks. Thank you. Andra Griffin and then Max. Thank you, Andrew Griffin, Manatee County. Um, so I want to thank Glenn. I know he's been working on this for years, and, and the people up here that are um, hopefully going to support this. Um, I believe it's the ordinance. Is it an ordinance? Yep. So um, I, I do like the ADU ordinance. I like the fact that it's 750 square feet under air, not total. Um, there's a huge difference in that related to the size of living space, so I am appreciative of that. The one thing that I really don't um, like about it is the city of Bradenton has 1,000 square feet. So it's like, you know, I kind of feel that 750 is a little short-changing. I think like something around 950 square feet would be better. I know at this point it's probably too late. I'd rather you guys go forward with 750 square feet than not at all. Um, related to the impact fees, and I'm, I'm sorry uh, Mr. Piper wasn't uh, involved in this um, previously, but it's my understanding that when we had a discussion about it, that the impact fees, uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of impact because some of the stuff is open to families that are living in the house, they're going outside, they've already paid the impact for their family previously. Um, so I am, I'm in support of no impact fees related to this, especially with our economic times and unaffordability here in Manatee County. So I hope you guys continue down that road. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Max and then Jean Pastorella. State your name. You'll have three minutes, Max. Max Brando, Realtor Association, Sarasota and Manatee County. Um, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. You guys know we support this ordinance. Uh, thanks, Commissioner Whitmore, for going through the history. It's been a lot of, a lot of years on this. And uh, just mainly wanted to come up and thank the commissioners and the staff. Uh, Bill and Lisa have been great throughout the process. And uh, we just ask that you support this. And uh, we're happy it's here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Jeannie Pastorello, and there you go. I'm Jeannie Pastorello, and I'm not representing anybody except myself. <laughs> really. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I live out in Duet, and for anybody who doesn't know what, where that is, that's the furthest northeast section of Manatee County where there is really nothing and nobody. 
uh, the cattle and horses. I have just under six acres, and I live in a mobile home, and it's a really nice mobile home. But come hurricane season, I have to leave. I wanted to be able to build a house on that property that could sustain uh, the, the winds of a hurricane and, you know, maybe a Hurricane 4 category or something like that, so that I could just stay and not have to run off somewhere. Um, right now, I think it's like uh, one house per five acres. Mm -hmm. So I sure would like to be able to build on my own property. So, and then the other thing is, too, I have kids, and uh, so when they get to a point where they would maybe like to live there too. There's lots of space. So, you know, why not be able to have my family there? So that's all I have to say, and I feel like I'm very selfish just talking about my own thing here when everybody else is there. That's what, <laughs> that's what you're hear. supposed to do. But that's it. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else <clears throat> from the public that would like to come forward? Now's your chance. Hello, my name is Kevin Heise. I live in Manatee County. Uh, I'm the president of our neighborhood association over in Palmasola Park along 75th in Manatee. And I've uh, been tracking what's been discussed with ADUs. And um, obviously you've been working on this for a long time. And here I am just kind of at the end of it, but I need to express how I feel about it. And one, the primary goal is I'm hearing to try to help alleviate a housing problem. That's in all the literature I've read with, I'm looking at a presentation from Josh, Dan, and Kristen French. The number one reason we're trying to help alleviate a housing problem. And I get a sense in the neighborhood I live in, there are 400 homes in our neighborhood. It's an established historical neighborhood, Palmasola Park. And we love it. And I go to Anna Marie Island a lot, and I see what has happened to that island. It's no longer a neighborhood of residents. It's a neighborhood of short-term rentals. And lately, in our neighborhood in Palmasola Park, the last three homes have been purchased by outside people. They don't even show up. They just pay cash from... Detroit for a house is going to turn into an Airbnb and VRBO. Mm -hmm. I see this as an open door for not solving a residential housing problem, but to allow it becomes a open door for commercialization for short term rentals. That's what's going to happen to Palmasola Park neighborhood. I, I know Manatee County is bigger than that, but I'm talking about our neighborhood. It's historical. And it's already starting to become like Anna Marie Island. And I personally don't want that because of this ADU open door policy making it easier to have these. It allows a realtor to have their number one tagline to their client say, look, you can have this home and Manatee County will allow you to build a unit in the back and pay, you can pay for your mortgage by renting this out. And they're not going to rent it to those that need it that are homeless they're gonna rent it to a vacationer from South Carolina. That's my concern. I'm a resident. I don't wanna see our neighborhood change. I know you've been down this path for a long time. There are good reasons for ADUs. I'm, I'm, I want to help those that are in need of housing, but at least in our neighborhood, I don't wanna be in that category. And so my next question is, how can I have our neighborhood opt out like these other two that have gotten a license to say not in our neighborhood. Okay. So that'll be my next question. I don't know who can answer that or who I can follow up with. Thank We're gonna you, be sir. talking after. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll be having comments. Anyone else wanna come forward on this topic? Do we have any phone calls? I don't see anything. Okay. All right, I've got some commissioners on the board. I'll, I'll close public comment, Commissioner Cruz. All right, I have a couple things for a couple of people as that kept going. Um, first, Glenn, I, I 
check your numbers. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I, I think the number of homeless students is significantly higher than 800 and something. It's over 2,000. I mean, just, just as a director over at Feeding Empty Little Tummies, and she keeps throwing out like 22, 2,300 yeah. as the, the current number. So it's a lot higher than what you're giving it credit for. Um, I'm also a, a huge fan of foreign based housing. We did talk about it. But again, doing it countywide is, is onerous. Um, but we always talk about this growth out east, and it's something we're going to be talking about on an upcoming work session. This is something I was going to mention on that upcoming work session. You know, pockets of foreign based housing. One of the problems we have right now is we don't have any meaningful redevelopment to get people closer to the urban cores and our infrastructure and our services. If we had foreign based coding, even if it's just in neighborhoods like down for you know mm -hmm. i know that's it's in the city of bradenton and they already have it but you know areas similar to 14th if you do it out west you do it in places where we can encourage people to do things especially if you can put retail with with residential over it it kills me every day i don't see that around here too it's 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 such a great product and form based how the form based code works so much better to allow for affordable housing and honestly it's really what if people actually took a step back a lot of what we get yelled at about on land use day would be resolved with form-based because <laughs> the, the form-based code resolves the, you know, whether or not it's compatible and whether or not it, it's built in the right place. Whether it, 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 people care less about whether it's, you know, other than the the overall impact traffic and whatever, they care less about whether it's retail or residential or it's office or it's retail. What they care about is how it looks, how it feels, what the height is, how the, the roads work. How, that's what people care about. So I'm 100% on board. I'd love to see at least little pockets of it from a test case. And the city of Bradenton has it, so we've already kind of have something we can play with. Uh, relative to impact fees, Andrew left and Ken's here and you guys run opposite sides. We haven't decided what we're gonna do. At the time when we first started discussing this, we were in the middle of an impact fee discussion as well, which now kind of got postponed for various reasons, and one of which being the state making their rule changes. So we never actually resolved how we were handling this. My personal preference is to have absolutely no impact fees on this, at least initially, because one, that'll spur development and get some people using it, even if they think they're on the clock to get this without an impact fee. But impact fees are very high and it will become a meaningful percentage of a 750 square foot unit. I mean, almost onerously so that so few people are going to build these anyway. It's why the city of Bradenton has so few of them and they've been on the books for 10 years because you can't pay 150, 200 bucks a foot to build something when you already have your land lean to buy a senior mortgage. So you're effectively doing it either all cash or with an unsecured loan. There's no way you're renting these things out to cover the cost. Of Nobody, it, you would have absolutely no concept of investment if you're building one of these for investment purposes. You're never making your money back on ADU. They're for other uses. So I'd much rather see zero impact fee. At the very least, I'd like to have zero impact fee until we figure out impact fee, because maybe that does get a few people off the shelf up front. The final thing I'll say relative to your neighborhood, I would look at a couple things. One. Uh, there are restrictions on the coastal high hazard area, which most likely you'll be in, which means you can't really do much with that anyway. Mm -hmm. um, second, you know, I, I hope realtors honestly use it as a tagline because I want these ADUs built. That's why we spent years and years and years trying to get this done. You know, it's people's private property. We do need housing. I, I, I'm not concerned about this becoming commercialized because we... Unlike some other places, we have accounted for some of this. We require the primary resident... To live, to live there, like so you. It, it, so if you think the primary resident is going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars building a 750 square foot tiny house in their backyard and then rent it out to spring breakers while they're literally living in the primary residence, I just don't see that happening to, uh, on any extent that's going to become meaningful to neighborhoods whatsoever. You know, there, there's very good reason to have this, and you know, I wish there was less restrictions, Ken. I wish we didn't pocket out all these little areas that you can do this and you can't do this. And if you live in district four, you don't have to worry about this. And if you, you know, it, 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 we could have just, you know, we, we could have just said, look, this is what it is. It's, it's in the greatest interest of Manatee County, but that's not how it worked out. We've spent a decade trying to get this done, you know, size wise, look wise. It, it, this is a, a solution that everyone here is happy with and we just need this on the books. So I'm, I'm comfortable with it and ready to move forward on this once. Commissioner Whitmore makes that motion. 
Um, Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm also very much in favor of accessory dwelling units. They work well and they do help us to provide housing. Now, as a District 4 representative, I say to the Palmasola Park gentlemen that I've, I worked with my neighborhoods because there were some who did not want accessory dwelling units for one reason or another. And so I would encourage you to work with your uh, district representative on the same thing um, and see what happens. The, the tiny homes that, that Glenn brought up, uh, you're gonna be excited, Glenn, because there's one coming forward. We, we got a tiny home project that I've heard is, is going to be coming to us soon. And I want to say a special thank you to Glenn because Glenn pours his heart and soul into trying to get more affordable housing. And I appreciate the, the really, really nice <laughs> handout. Uh, I know you spent a lot of time on it. Let me go over a couple of the points you brought up. Um, recreational vehicles are just that. They're a vehicle. Uh, and they're not safe as a permanent dwelling. So yes, we do have a lot of people in recreational vehicles, but they have another permanent place to live, which is why it's fine. They can drive off if there's a storm and they can avoid the storm. Uh, but that's why we can't have them as permanent housing in the area, it's, it's camping. Um, uh, cities, have been doing this for 10 years, city of Bradenton. I heard you say that. And that's because cities are smaller, they're more urbanized, they're more compact, and it's just easier to get to approve ADUs in a city. And that's why you, that's where you normally see a lot of ADUs, and you have for many, many years. It's harder to do it with a county that's so big and diverse. Um, impact fees. So Ken, um, I, I kind of agree with Ken because, um, you know, there's a lot of pressure on impact fees. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Did you need to say something down there? I keep hearing. No? We're listening to you. Okay. Thank you. There's a lot of pressure on, on you know, how we're going to build infrastructure. And, um, and we just cut the millage, which is a great thing. But that puts more pressure on impact fees. You know, you can't just keep squeezing and pretty soon there's no money left. We've there's an impact fee is because there's an impact. Um, we have, you know, children living in homes. We have people driving cars and using water and sewer and parks and libraries and all those things. And so we need to find a way to pay for the impacts. So if we're not going to make the person building the ADU, then we need to find a way to pay for the impact because somebody has to pay. Um, Glenn brought up the great idea of having large homes used as apartment complexes. We do that a lot in the cities. I mean, you just walk down town here, you'll see many um, larger homes that have been converted to apartments. Again, it works very easily in the cities, um, and it's a little bit more difficult in the counties. Um, vertical mixed use, the same thing. I love that, and you'll see that in cities. It's a little bit harder to do in counties because if you're gonna have a business, you have to have a, a population that's gonna use the business, but we love that. We'd love to encourage that. For base code, same thing. <laughs> Works very easily in the cities, um, but I would like for us to have more form-based code um, sections. I really would. We have some of those components now in our land development code. I, I'd like to encourage more. Where, where it's appropriate for areas to, uh, to delineate form-based code standards for certain areas, I think that'll really help to streamline development. We just, it's, Difficult or impossible to do it for the whole county, I think. Um, Co-housing, I, I looked at your report here. I think we already allow that because the definition of family is so loosely defined now. A anybody can be a family. So if you and your 10 best friends want to live in a house together, you can do that. There's no prohibition against that. Um, so those are my comments. I'm very excited that we are approving ADUs today. I think it's going to be a benefit to Manatee County. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. I, the tiny homes, you know, that's actually how this all started out was tiny homes and then we went into ADU. So if we're having something come before us, I'll be very interested because I brought this up with staff. I brought it up before the board and they say, well, you're restricted because of your land development code, your setbacks. And, you know, we see all these big corner lots and I go, why can't you do something there? Well, you still got the setbacks. So, but that's something that as a policy, we could uh, change in the future. 
But if they're allowing them now, I mean, I need to get more up on what we're allowing because, you know, I know some of you know Jean Palin. She went up to Asheville, and there's tiny home uh, communities all over, and they're very, very successful. So, uh, and what the Whitfield area, um, they have many guest homes, which we would probably call ADUs, but um, with the ADUs, you can have a stove. Guest homes can't. So some of the areas like Bayshore and Whitfield that you heard, we found out, and I know actually Pat Glass's former house has a guest house in it, and when she lived in Whitfield many years ago. So um, people have been doing, and Riverview Boulevard, we have quite a few guest homes. Uh, we gotta call them uh, guest homes, but now they'll be in compliant, and we're not gonna, um, grant, we're gonna grandfather them in. They're permanent. We're not gonna give them a, we're not sunsetting them, right? Because we had talked about that at one time. Correct. Okay, and sir, my, um, oh, first of all, ma'am, if somebody could help her uh, answer with her questions, because I think it's very easy, because she can build a house, and then she could even maybe do an ADU if you've got enough property for your kids to come, and they can stay in the ADU, and you can have your house or vice versa. So there is a way, so you, I'm glad you did come down, because you may get your questions answered, okay? I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. And Palmasola, my daughter lives on Palmasola Boulevard, and there's a beautiful grand new house there, and there was like 15 cars there the other day, and a bunch of guys partying. It was think during Super Bowl or whatever, so it, it's a, um, it's a, um, uh, you know, a short-term rental for sure. Um, but, but again, um, the whole intent of this whole ordinance was for your families. My, my kid lives there. I'm hoping that maybe she'll take me and my husband in someday when, when we're needed, and that's how all this started. Um, but the cost of building it, like you heard Commissioner Cruz, is exorbitant. You are not going to get low-income housing in there. They've got to be able to pay to build that. And at one point, wasn't it like $100 for a plank of um, plywood not too long ago, a sheet? But it's gone down now a little bit. But it's still, it's, it's unpriceable. So, and you have to meet setbacks. Even if you want to build seven, um, that's the maximum, right? So you can go smaller and go where we originally attended, which was like 350 square feet. I mean, you may not be able to, you have to meet your setbacks, you have to meet the vision. Um, you have to beat, um, you have to have a parking where you allow one in it on the driveway. Or yes. you have to construct one. Or the, yes, one that it has to be on the property and it ha the owner has to live there. So that's a way that we thought maybe what, what the original intent was would happen. But you're not going to get um, low income there because it, nobody is going to rent that to anybody low income because they gotta, it's very expensive to build. So we have, that's why it's taken 10 years to get where we are today. But hopefully that helps answer some of your questions. Commissioner Satcher. Uh, Bill, I was just gonna ask, um, because she represents other people watching, for the, the lady from Duet, uh, what options, assuming this passes, which it is set to pass, um, what options would she have for her property? Assuming things are normal, there's not some weird, uh, you know, uh, situation. If she's on six acres, she's an ag. If she wants an ADU versus a guest house, advantages. Just if, if you could do a quick summary, I'd appreciate it. Sure. <coughs> and after um, after commissioner comments, um, if it's if the board would like, I'd like to address more of the comments that we heard as well. Um, on the on the A zone property, she can have an ADU or if the existing mobile home meets the standards that are established for ADU, she could do a stick built house and use either, and use the mobile home as an ADU. Right. But there's nothing that says that just because you have a mobile home, you have to put a mobile home as an ADU. You can do a stick built ADU on that property. And then what about, would, are there more options if she does a guest house or do? The only more options is the difference between the two is you can have a full kitchen in a guest house. You can build a larger structure um, than you can an ADU, um, and um, guest houses are not intended for full-time occupancy. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Commissioner Cruz. I just think, and maybe it's when Bill comes back up to respond to some of this, so I just want to throw out there. I, we do need to figure out what we're doing with the impact fees. I mean, hypothetically speaking, if we sign this thing today, tomorrow someone could be walking in to build an ADU. Do we know what we're doing with impact fees at that point in time? Are we going to charge that person $13,000 worth of impact fees? 
you know, it, I'm just saying we don't we haven't decided even what we're doing relative to those impact fees right now. So I would I would have to assume that the default would be we are charging, and I do not want to. And anyone who sits up here and says we need to charge impact fees because people are impacting things when someone's got to cover it. I, I, I'm still waiting to hear outside of myself one time because believe me, I heard it from people. You know, anyone say we should have been charging 100% impact fees this entire time. So if you were happy only charging 90% of our impact fees year after year, now all of a sudden these tiny little homes are what's supposed to be covering our streets? Like, oh, that's disingenuous. <laughs> it's like we, we, were, we were comfortable not fully funding things previously, but now all of a sudden this is where we're going to get our money from. All you're doing by charging impact fees here is guaranteeing nobody ever uses this in this entire 10 years wasn't worth the paper it's going to be written on when Vanessa signs it. Uh, I'm next on the board real quick. As I recall, we did um, ask staff to check into the impact fees. I don't know mm -hmm. who that would they did. be under, but uh, we did mention that. And I think it is something that I, I was hoping was going to come back with this, but obviously, Bill, it's not included at this time. So have we even, uh, Attorney Shank, maybe you know, have we even, um, I think we were going to do a new study is that correct impact fee study has that been I'm not, even decided I have to at this staff, point but there's a staff there's a study pending but i don't think it addresses it this hold. particular use right it would have to be called out and studied well i addressed when the last one was done it was incorrect and so it was my understanding we were going to to do a new study but then i haven't heard anything clark are you familiar with that sir Uh, good afternoon for the record. Clark Davis, Deputy Director of Traffic Management. The, there is an ongoing uh, impact fee update study. Um, it's been paused be to update some things. I don't think accessory, well, no, I take it back. We are looking at the scope to include accessory dwelling units as a separate use in there as part of that update. Uh, but for now, and absent other direction, I think the consensus view is that an accessory dwelling unit would be treated like an apartment of the same size. And so that would, that's, that, well, there you that's go. what we've I got have an idea. right now. Um, Madam Attorney, is there any way we could do a motion to not have any impact fees on, AD, on ADUs? No, we don't, have we, the ability, we don't have the ability to do that today. But I got an idea. All right, well, I think you are I know. next commissioner on yeah. the board. Being around a while, to, a, a while helps a little bit. I have an idea. We could, we can't do it today, our attorney is correct, but at our next meeting, we could look at a, um, for any um, um, ADUs that are built um, for the next 12 months, no impact fees, and put a moratorium on it for 12 months, and then we can decide after that, anyone new ones, whether we're going to do that now, because we don't have time right now. But I do not want to lay this, delay this any longer. I, the attorney's correct. We can't do, probably we have to have a hearing for a moratorium, and you have to have a reason why we're doing it, and I know that, and you have to have an end date. So I was thinking for 12 months, and then we can um, look at what we're going to do sooner. I mean, and um, what we can always have the hearing any time, but at least if we put a moratorium for 12 months, so if anybody builds something within 12 months, they won't get charged impact fees. And then what we could do is, um, if we decide to levy impact fees later, we can. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, are, are you finished, Commissioner Whitmore? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to respond to that. That is exactly why I asked the county attorney to tell us what we could do or not do in that regard. I think I want to make report, sure it's legal. We report back to you, because I'm unaware of any way to do it other than do the impact fee study and have the use listed in there, like Clark stated. Right. So be, Statute yeah. requires you to have a study and the data analysis, mm -hmm. and that has to be repaired. Whether you do a separate study special just for ADUs and fast track it, that's possible. Yeah, and there's no way that we could just say we didn't want impact fees on ADUs. I mean, it's got to be, we've got to make sure up it's under the data the legal. analysis for you to look at. Right, okay. If you want the county attorney's office to report back to you on options, we can do that. Yes, please. Do we, we need a motion separately. for that? I bet I can get it. I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. You want a motion for that? Yes, fine. I'll make a motion that we look at all options on what we're going to do about impact fees for ADUs, and also in that, uh, have the attorney consider levying a, or a moratorium until we come up with um, what we're going to do. I second that. Uh, I don't yeah, want it's moratorium. totally legal. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not done. saying it's not legal. I no, I know. Like a, mor a moratorium. Is it 90%? Like well, moratorium is the only way you can do it. Well, that's what I was asking. Yeah. Uh, is there a second to that motion? You yeah, you second it? All right. Well, we have a motion by Commissioner Whitmore and a second by...
Commissioner Cruz, um, I'm going to need to open this to public comment before we vote. Anyone from the public want to come forward on the motion? Max? Strictly on the motion. He's okay with it. Glenn Jibalina, for the record, um, I agree there shouldn't be any impact fees. I mean, I don't see the difference between, because right now, as it stays, I can put I can put a 750 square foot accessory dwelling unit attached to my house. I can also put a 750 foot two bedroom room addition to my house with no impact fees. That's not true. No, you have to have pay impact fees. Yeah, you do. You, yeah. you would pay impact fees. I, I will also point out. Can I get clarification? The guest houses don't have impact fees, correct? No. So that means all we're going to do is encourage people to build guest houses and then put the range in like everyone else does with a guest house in this town. So we're not, no one's going to use the ADU because why spend the extra 10 grand? They're just going to build, continue building guest houses, which they can do anyway. Exactly. If they don't match up, then it's, a, then it's still pointless. Right. Okay, Madam Clerk, can you, um, oh, I'm sorry, Max, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to reiterate, uh, if we could explore ways to not charge impact fees on these, I think Commissioner Cruz was right. These are going to be cost prohibitive. And if we want to get towards putting people in more affordable housing, I think we need to look at ways to make it as cheap and as possible. And can you state your name for the record? Oh, sorry. Max Brando, Realtor Association. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else from the public? All right, I'm going to close public comment. Madam Clerk, would you, for me especially, repeat that motion, please? Oh, she needs a mic. Oh, Madam Chairman, the motion that I have is for staff to look at all options pertaining to ADUs and have the county attorney's office consider a moratorium to levy, uh, to not levy impact fees. Basically, it's going to be a report back on what the options right. are. Right, exactly. Now, I watch using the word moratorium. It raises a lot of red flags. I won't vote I, for I'm it. I'm sorry. It I'd rather not have that in the motion. Madam really. Attorney, I've done moratoriums for years, and I know it's a totally lawful but you have to have a reason why and an end date. And it's so that you can't go any further on that issue until you meet again about it. So I know this is totally lawful. I, there's nothing illegal what I'm doing. So I respectfully don't agree with the attorney on this one, but. Well, that's interesting. Well, um, I will tell you, just me personally, one commissioner, I will not vote to do this and put a moratorium on the ADUs. I'm, I'm not going to, if I understand no, the wordage of it. Only, only impact fees. Just only impact fees. Is that correct? Can yes. you make it more I've never clear? heard of a moratorium on impact fees. A moratorium on, on uses. If you don't want to issue building permits, like for cell towers. There was new right. use. It wasn't in the code. We, we had, most local governments had a moratorium for six months to figure out how to regulate cell towers, do code amendments, and how to regulate them. So if once somebody builds one tomorrow, they get charged full impact fees if we don't do something. Am I correct? Any action you take today is not going to stop the impact fees from kicking in. Right. You're going to have to have a report back and find out how to do it. You have to have an ordinance, a study, and a public hearing. The statute requires you to go through that. Well, that's so what change we're doing. change impact fees. <laughs> I will encourage everyone to build lots of guest houses. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to vote as long as the word moratorium's in there. So don't even know at what any rate, means. Um, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 I don't know what we're doing. The moratorium one. Well, well. Excuse That's what the motion Thank is you. on the floor. Commissioner Servia. Yeah, I, I always defer to our legal staff. We're not attorneys. She's an attorney. If you know, she's she's she would like to bring back a report that details all options we have. And I'm sure if a moratorium is allowed on impact fees, she will present that. But I, I'd like to defer to our attorney, and I'll support that. So, what are we going to make a motion on today, then? Excuse me. I we just have a motion I'm, on the floor. Does it remain as you? I'm trying to yes, follow procedures. Yes, it remains. You're going to because I know motion. I'm right. Okay, then we'll go ahead and we'll vote on that motion. But I need to get the motion clear, right, madam? Okay, it's just a moratorium on not levying impact fees for 12 months until we decide if, what we're going to charge until the impact fee study comes out and what if we are going to charge anything. Um, I have legal objection to that motion, and I ask for not to vote on it. I can't go it. against an attorney because I don't know anything. Yeah. So I'm just I'm, I'm going to pull say. my second. I'm just I don't I got yeah. an attorney yelling at me over here. I'm trusting the well, attorney. Well, you're right. He yells all the that. time. I'm okay with it. He doesn't yell. 
passionate, oh, passionate. reputation down there. Yeah, evidently. Uh, so <laughs> he knows what Commissioner I mean. Satcher, you are not next on the board. I'm sorry, <laughs> Commissioner Bellamy. And Commissioner <laughs> I'm following. I'm not going to get caught up in it. I'm okay either way. Yeah, um, I'm okay. And I can wait till after the pass to speak if you want me to, Madam Chair. Is that okay? Or to speak? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda item. Because I did want to make the motion. Okay. Second. And then we'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to keep it with uh, Commissioner Whitmore and Commissioner Chris. <laughs> I've got to open stroke. it back up to public comment again. Um, Madam Clerk, would you repeat the now motion, what it is now? The it's, the, it's the recommended. The recommend. But what is it? We already opened it. Yeah, we had public comment, comment on the ordinance. ordinance. So I don't have yes. to open it No, again? you're so, correct. Okay. You're okay on that. So, Madam Chairman, the recommended motion as listed on the, uh, the staff, uh, the memorandum, the agenda update memorandum. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what I know, the motion so was. Um, it's just the motion and the staff to, report. And we got to be careful. To that adopt it's Manatee correctly. County Ordinance 21 11, which is LDCT 20 03. Madam Chair, someone has to read the motion on the record. It's just you want Where is it? Motion? I'll read it. Where is it? Thank you, Madam <laughs> Attorney. Right That's just why I asked. You do better than I do. Okay, the recommended motion. Is this on? Um, uh, based upon the staff report, evidence presented, comments made at the public hearing, and action of the Planning Commission. And is this the right one? Planning Commission and finding the re request to be consistent with Manatee County Comprehensive Plan and in accordance with the criteria for Land Development Code text amendments in Section 341 of the Land Development Code as conditioned herein, I move to adopt Manatee County Ordinance 21-11 LDCT 20-03 amending the Manatee County Land Development Code as recommended by the Planning Commission. Madam Chair, I did want to respond to some comments before you vote on the ordinance. I was, I'm a little confused. Are you voting on the ordinance or on the uh, um, motion amendment? has been made, Bill? So we've got to follow through. Okay. He wants to know. Can, Wait, he just wants to know what we're voting. I, on. That's what I was trying to tell. Sometimes you. Staff everybody is better to sit down while you're stop. ahead. I advise you to do that. Okay. Can, can, can I can I clarify one thing though? You're being mean again. Be, before you vote, can I clarify or let Bill clarify one thing? And it was uh, in reference to the coastal uh, information that Commissioner Cruz mentioned. We took that out. I just wanted, for the record, to let everyone know that that coastal information that you know where you're not allowed to do it in the coastal areas that was removed. No, I didn't say it was completely prohibited. I just said there's restrictions already in there relative to setbacks and other okay. things you can do, and, and which is going to minimize that. Yeah. things like that. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. I don't think Bill's happy. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Whitmore, a second by Commissioner Cruz. All in favor Madam, say Madam aye. Madam Chair, I push my button. Oh, Carol. Well, Bill is yeah. not happy, and I want to know what's going on. Are you all right, Bill, with what um, Rob just said? I yes. want Okay. I'm all right now. Madam Anybody Chair, else before we go Madam to Madam Chair, vote? can I clarify who seconded the motion? I have down Commissioner Mr. Bellamy. Cruz. So it was Cruz. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Whitmore made the motion. Commissioner, you have a hard time. Try sitting up here in this seat. Commissioner Cruz was the second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Madam Clerk, it is approved unanimously. And, Six. And Madam zero. Chair, I'm yes, looking at Bill O'Shea's PowerPoint from March 4th, 2021, where we had a, a report on this ordinance. Yeah. And at the last page, it says impact fees must do by separate ordinance and, and future study. So, We've been aware of this since March that the impact fee is an issue. No, I agree, but so, back just, then that was when still when Nicole and everyone was still bringing the impact fee study to us. We actually had a work session for it, and then it back got pushed back when the uh, Florida Senate and, uh, and House changed the ruling, so we had to go back to redo it. So we never got around to finalizing okay. it. Okay, yeah, I'm just saying it's been an issue. Okay, I'm back on the board. I do have one question for the county attorney. Do we need to do a motion in order to have you come back and give us uh, thoughts on what we can do about the impact fees? Yeah, I would ask Clark, you've been working on this project. I have not. Do you have anything yes, to offer on this so point? So I'm sort of one step removed. Your, your impact fee administrator is Nicole Knapp, and, and she's not here this afternoon, but she has shared some messages with um, with Ms. Wenzel during the hearing. and Please state um, your name too, Clark. Uh, again, for the record, Clark Davis, uh, Deputy Director of Traffic Management for Public Works. And um, 
We'll need to seek some clarification from her. I may have misspoke earlier. It, it may be that based on her conversations with our consultant that we will not initially be charging impact fees on accessory dwelling units. Whether we are or not, I think we would all agree accessory dwelling units are a new thing for us in our impact fee system. And so e even if we don't wait for the full study, we could work with our consultant to get an interim determination under our current methodology as what the appropriate fee, if any, it will be. So. Um, I, I guess I'm asking that you give us a chance to work as staff to bring something back to you, if you make a motion to that effect. I mean, you've already talked about things like that. We'll, we'll be on it and take care of it. Thank you. All right. And Madam Chair, if, whether we need an ordinance or not, we'll wait and see what Clark says. Okay. And, and if you need to make a motion on doing ordinance, you know, you can do that. I can't make a motion, but I'll be happy to second it. Somebody give me a motion. I move to have staff bring us back options uh, regarding impact fees on ADUs. Second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed. Madam Clerk, it's approved six to zero. Thank you. Okay. Um, before we move forward, it is very hard to keep the order that we need to make sure that we have. And I know that Commissioner Whitmore is very aware of this because she's been on this board longer than I. It's very important. This is a land use meeting. So in order to make sure that we keep proper procedures done, so if this should, for whatever reason, end up in court, we have procedures that we have to follow. So I would ask in the future, commissioners, that please hit your button so you can be recognized and get on the record. You, I cannot continue to have all of you just speaking up whenever you want. That is not proper procedure for this board, and we all know it. So I'm asking for your assistance on that. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, now that we're, we're done, thankfully, Gosh. and we have these ADUs in place, in theory, I, I still at some point want an answer because we're going to get questions, and I like to be able to give answers to people. If somebody shows up on Monday or tomorrow and puts in to get to build an ADU in their backyard, what charged. in the world do we tell them they're going to be charged for impact fees? Impact fees are very expensive. That's a broad amount of money that, you know, we need to give some answer. We can't just be like, oh, don't do anything until we get back to you and then wait months for a revised report to get done. Ms. Cruz. John. Agreed. John's here. Mr. Barnock, can you address back. that question that Mr. Cruz, Commissioner Cruz has? Yes, ma'am. Welcome back. John Barnock, Building Development Services. Um, if you applied for a building permit tomorrow, you probably wouldn't be able to complete an ADU for five months based on the cost of material, the availability of material, engineering, all the different things that go into doing that. So I really think the board does have a small cushion here to do what Clark has just said and study that. And you can tell an applicant that this is under consideration mm -hmm. by the Board of County Commissioners. So don't do anything then. You don't pay your impact fees until CO, CO. at the end. Yeah, but you got to know what you're paying on CO. I understand, but that's the best option we have at this time. That's why to, to play devil's to advocate, what if I or hit your button? To play devil's advocate, what if I live in an agriculturally zoned parcel and this afternoon I go out and buy myself a mobile home park and dump it in my backyard tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Same thing. It that's takes five months to dump a mobile home park in my back, no, a mobile home in my backyard. Doesn't. But now I have an ADU by the, right. well, what we just approved, and they're gonna. And right now, that's correct. In theory, we're gonna want to charge them something, but they don't know what that is. It's about the only option in 15 minutes I can think of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do. I, I, I appreciate it. I'm not. I'm not joking. It was. I was trying to play devil's advocate because people are watching this, and this is an important thing that we've it's just passed. Important. That we've tried a lot of time. We spent a lot of time getting. These to folks it. have worked very, very hard. At your all's direction on this, yeah. and they really want to bring this across the finish line. It's done because there is going to be some interest, and there's other ways that can be done. You can take and go build a guest house, and by the time you finish it, it could be an ADU. Oh, you know? that just let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to I'm not going to let all my secrets yeah. out, but yeah. you know, okay. we're talking about bringing old mobile homes. Thank in. You. you can't bring old mobile homes in. Yeah. All mobile homes have a class rating That's based right. on the wind zone where they're located. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Mr. Barnett. Demanded by the state. Good to have you back. Thank you. 
Commissioner Serbia. Yeah, I just wanted to say zoning laws would probably prevent you from putting a mobile home park in your backyard. And um, Lisa wanted to speak, and I, um, Lisa, I just wanted to say our impact fee ordinance currently addresses it until it's changed. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to speak to that. I think Clark spoke to that. I think we will get with Nicole to confirm, but with the ordinance takes 30 days to become effective, so there is a challenge period. We are going to work on a brochure to let citizens know what they can and can't do with ADUs, and that will be part of it. Um, but we will get with Nicole to confirm. I, I was corresponding with her, but I'm kind of confused with the, the, <laughs> the messages. So I, I don't want to misspeak, but I believe Clark was correct. And you will get, um, I'm next on the board, you will get with this board to let us know what you've come up with before yes. it's given to the citizens, correct? Um, for the brochure, you mean? Yes. Um, we can certainly yes, do please. that. Yes, please. I think we should see that. It's just the informational brochure that we okay. are working on. All right. I think we should probably see that to make sure that we're okay with it. Okay. Commissioner Whitmore. Well, I don't think we need to prove it, but I would like to see it. Um, a Fred Hale called me this morning. He's a construction company, and he has a few people that have called him about ADUs. And he thought it was Sarasota County that was passing it. One was Manatee, and I says, no, it's Manatee. So there are people out there that are looking. So to think that uh, this is just a pie in the sky, it isn't. So um, out of the clear blue, he called me. Um, I, so I want this resolved, you know, hopefully sooner than later. Thank you. Commissioner Satcher. And I just wanted to say, at least from my perspective, um, so that we don't end up with, so we can shorten how many meetings we end up having on the same topic. When we talk about options, obviously there seem to be some on the board that would want a full impact fee. Uh, there's some on the board that would want zero impact fee. And then you might want to come with something reasonable in between and see where the votes end up and where the discussion lies. That way we don't have to have a separate meeting if you have a 100% plan and a 0% plan, and neither of them, you know, pass. Um, so that that's just a suggestion, assuming that you can legally get to those three uh, options. It might be a good thing to bring back. But it's up to you. All right. I don't have any other commissioners on the board. And, Bill, you thought this would be over today. <laughs> over. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. We're going to go ahead and move forward then. Um, County Attorney, do you have any other comments that you'd no, like to make? Nothing, madam. All right. Commissioner comments. We'll start uh, with Commissioner Servia. Um, thank you. I have one item that I wanted to uh, just kind of introduce to the board, if you guys have not heard of this, um, because the biggest problem that I hear about with Airbnbs um, in my district is noise. Uh, and I and probably it's the same for your districts if you've got Airbnbs and there is a product now that is called noise aware mm -hmm. there's probably other products but the one that I've been reading about is noise aware it's really a benefit for the property owner because what it does is it it's a noise monitor that is outside of the home I think I guess you could put it wherever you want and um, <clears throat> once the decibels are reached, uh, whatever the local ordinances are and the times that are allowed, um, it notifies the property owner that there's noise that's happening at the facility that is beyond what the laws allow. And then there's an automated system that would send uh, an email to the, the property owner. And the property owner can then take control and handle, get ahead of those conflicts, you know? Because the, the property owners want good renters and people that are using their facilities. They, they don't like the problem cases. And um, I think that it would... It's a, it's a really cool idea that is, you know, kind of getting ahead of a problem and allowing Airbnbs to live in harmony in our residential neighborhoods without disrupting the peace. So I just like um, maybe we can explore it as a board and as a staff to see if there's something that, you know, might be useful in some of our neighborhoods. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Commissioner Cruz, did you want to comment? Yeah, I, I think we've talked about I, I know what you're talking about I've read about it before and I think we've talked about it maybe we're back at the convention center it was at least brought up in passing I in fact I know it was, it's when those people who I believe maybe they're in Commissioner Ball's district about the house that was doing the weddings and stuff in the back uh, it, it, this exact thing came up and, and I've said this before like I, I hate 
licensing and regulations and, and fees. But I think part of the problem, and we had the discussion during that discussion, is we don't have any teeth to forcing owners to do anything. They can rent to whoever they want because they just go out and rent again. You know, what I'd like to see is let it be free. It doesn't have to cost a penny. But give every give everyone who wants to rent their units essentially a, a, a license for the year to rent their units out for free. But it, it's got some teeth to it. You violate noise ordinances or park ordinance or anything three times, you, you lose that for the rest of the year. You got to... You got to give the the owner something to, to be penalized by because they're not penalized. If there's noise or, or if there's garbage, then it's the people renting, and they just move out the next day and, and go back home after spring break. So I'm dialoguing with him, Madam Chairman, and I'm next on the board. Is that all right with you? Sure. Okay. Um, so there are communities and cities that that do exactly that, that that have written ordinances and have required these devices. And But what it does is it removes a lot of the burden from law enforcement because a, a good majority of the problems are taken care of quickly, and those that aren't taken care of, law enforcement can get involved. So it just depends on how a community wants to use it. Um, but it can be used, and it is being used in different cities in that way. Yeah, and I agree, but it, you got to give the owner a reason to want to do something about it, not just to know there's loud people. If the owner lives in Chicago and they got loud people at their house on Anna Maria, they don't care if the, the, the very next day they can rent it to other loud people. But if they risk losing their ability to rent it for some window of time, they may more proactively call in and say, hey, keep your mouth shut and turn the music down because I'm getting, I, I see your decibels up. There are people who won't care. You're right. But there are people who will care. Um, so there are good um, people who rent and they want to be good neighbors. So, yes, it addresses some of the problems, and you can address even more of the problems by adopting an ordinance. Right. All right, I'm next on the board to respond to that. Um, we have a noise ordinance in the county right now. And I think rather than put in another ordinance, I will tell you I've had this situation come up um, in a, in a uh, community there off of State Road 70. And it, let me tell you, the noise ordinance worked. So the bottom line is before I would vote <clears throat> on a brand new ordinance for some reason, I would rather look at the ordinance that we have. I'm not into um, continuing to just get more and more government involved. They have something to work with. The sheriff has said he uses it. I can tell you he's used it in my district, so I don't know why he couldn't use it in everybody else's if he can use it in mine. But you already have an ordinance on file. Commissioner Serbia. Yes, Madam Chairman, I'm aware of that. We do. Um, but I will tell you that the I've talked with the sheriff many times about this. They, it's always um, a low priority for them. They have bigger fish to fry. <laughs> they, they can't run out to every noise complaint, and they get a lot of them. Um, so, uh, and, and I'm not looking for more regulation either. This works in concert with our existing regulations. You know, if you have neighborhoods uh, where it's a problem, it just may be something we want to consider. Uh, that's all I'm saying, because it, it helps to preserve the neighborhood peace and allows uh, these short-term rentals. Everybody just lives harmoniously, more harmoniously. So um, just asking for your consideration uh, in the future. I'm not making a motion. Uh, just take a look at what we have. Thank you. Commissioner Satcher, any comments? Um, Commissioner comments from the meeting today that you want to cover? Yeah, I just wanted to point out to everyone um, the topics that we've been undertaking as a board here and uh, and just to use your own judgment as to whether or not what level of importance and money uh, should be tied to those things. We've got now a proposal to bring up a bunny protection ordinance to be discussed by the board in the future. Uh, we undertook last time an all-day meeting about uh, the kittens and dogs. Um, and then now we're talking about potential new noise monitoring backyard devices. Um, and, I, and I get emails continuously um, that it's a waste of our time or money um, to consider protecting babies in Manatee County. And I just want to say that I vehemently uh, I disagree with that determination. 
it almost seems like it's an orchestrated thing um, because that's the only topic that comes through in my inbox. Um, like that's some kind of angle and I don't think it's a successful angle. And let me just say this, the whole meetings and everything that we do here would be amazingly more efficient if when we disagreed, we just stated our position, another person says, well, I disagree because of AB, and then we move on. We don't have to go back and forth all day, although I know by bringing this topic up, I give everyone that option. Um, but I just want to say that uh, I do think <laughs> saving lives might be worthwhile considering the other things that we do here as a county commission. Thank you. You're going to make me save, aren't you? We don't have to say anything I, else. We I just have move to on. say that, you know, when you're talking about murder of babies, human babies, it should take some precedence. Commissioner Cruz, anything uh, for commissioner comments, sir? Uh, not really. Uh, Real quick, I'm not going to go th into details. I'll, I'll keep it quick. I just did a, uh, a short little thing at the Paris Civic Association. We've got a big work session coming up on August 31st. We're going to be talking about the North Central Overlay as well as the uh, development boundary. And uh, so I promised everyone I'd come out and, and listen to all their, their comments and be able to answer questions. So I did something at Paris Civic Association last Tuesday. If you look around Facebook, you'll see I'm out in Mayaka each of the next two Sundays. Uh, this coming Sunday from 1 to 3 and the following from 1 to 3, two different locations. So everyone's invited to come out and give me your thoughts and comments. Ask me any questions you have because for some reason I promised to do this. Thank you. You volunteered. I saw your Ooh. thing. You <laughs> did it. This you board did. never ceases to amaze me. Yeah. Commissioner Bellamy, did you have anything, sir? Yeah, I just want to um, clear up uh, some things. I... Um, had a, had a great meeting uh, with the NAACP and the conversation of redistricting came up and um, the introductory exercise that we had um, was um, scrutinized and I, I, I made it clear, uh, and not by the NAACP, it was by commentary, um, but I, ma I made it clear that that was just an introduction um, of the exercise and we were not just, you know, just drawing lines to try to you know, predetermine what we're going to do. I, I actually needed the introductory exercise, to be honest with you, and I'm excited to say a few things. Um, first of all, there, we will have a meeting um, with the um, political um, um, committee from the NAACP. I will um, this coming up Friday, and um, I'm, I'm excited that we're going to, you know, hold those conversations. That's the first thing, and, and the second thing, we do, we are aware what took place back in 1990. If you're not, I've, actually, I've sent the information to the county attorney as far as what took place in 1991 as far as the minority district as where it relates to, 90, um, to, to District 2. And I'm sure that's going to come up again. But the reason why I wanted to bring it um, out because for some reason it was identified that we had we were trying to make decisions then. I don't think that's no. what, that wasn't the intent. And I wanted to make sure for the record mm -hmm. that wasn't the intent what we were doing. It was an introduction exercise mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's it. But I am excited to say I'm, I'm gonna meet with NAACP. I've talked to the attorney about it so we can make sure that all the concerns and things as it goes for the minority district are out there in front of us while we go through this process. I, I'm gonna respond to that, I hit my button. Um, you know, I thought it was really interesting having that exercise because I didn't know exactly how many total people lived in my district <laughs> or the other districts. I had no idea. So I found it very interesting to see that. Um, and it did, I think, according to Dr. Hopes, the reason he did it that way was to give us all an eye-opener, to let us see what we're looking at here in the county and, and, and how many... Um, you know, what the population is in each district. And by the way, guys, I would really appreciate y'all taking some of mine because I'm like... You're not going to have a choice. I, <laughs> I mean, I got the You're biggest district there is uh, in population, no so except for the two at large. And then right now, y'all don't count because you're not involved not in the redistricting. So, um, you know, I thought it was educational for us more so than meaning anything else because I can tell you now I saw where some of those lines were and I'm gonna fight on it I didn't like it at all I'm sure probably some of the other commissioners would agree with that as well 
Yes, sir. I just labeled it as an introductory exercise. So we can be a little bit more familiar yeah. as we start, as we navigate our way through the process. Agreed. So. I think you're right on that. Um, Commissioner Whitmore, you're next. And I know Commissioner Van Osterbridge and Bellamy will be fighting over some common areas. Both of them <laughs> put their lines on the same area. So <laughs> that'll be a dog fight. <laughs> okay. um, and I didn't mean that because it was a dog, sorry. Okay. Um, first of all, you mentioned Commissioner Ch Cruz about what Commissioner Servi was talking about with the noise. I don't want to hash into it, but we don't, we can't enforce anything because we don't have rental licenses in Manatee County. We've talked about it in the past, but every board since I've been here has said no, and um, I'm from a city that does, and every city does have one, except for the county. But, you know, so that, that would be hard to give them any kind of, um, to um, penalize them because there's nothing to penalize except for noise ordinance, and it has to be over 65 decibels, I think, so. Um, lighting the Skyway, we all got an email from a Janet Cook, and um, the chair said it would be a good time to bring this up. This lady, um, we're bring, uh, regarding Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October, and um, to light the Skyway up pink, and uh, she's got to ask Hillsborough and Pinellas. So I didn't know if you guys were interested, and if you could uh, make a motion that the chair write, uh, sign a letter that we are in support of that. Is that a motion? Yes. Second. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Whitmore with a second by Commissioner Servia. Uh, before we vote, I need to open this to public comment. Madam Clerk, did you get the motion? Okay. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak on this issue? Any phone calls? All right, I'm closing public comment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Madam Clerk, it's approved six to zero. Um, I'm, Commissioner okay. Cruz, did you want to make a comment on that? I just want to respond to that motion. I, I talked to uh, Dr. Hobbs and uh, County Attorney Clegg, and I, I honestly don't think anyone up here cares what color that bridge is. I, I think for simplicity, I had mentioned to them, and they, they agreed, that maybe this is one of those things we just assign to the county administrator to administratively approve going yeah. forward, because do we, does anyone really care? And if anything, if you kind of care, it's probably best that we don't vote on it. Exactly. <laughs> so, That's true. I mean, it's honestly best case scenario, because if we don't care what color it is, why even subject yourself to having to use the restroom make during a vote? Make a motion to have the administrator do that. Anybody want to? Yeah, I, I would make a motion that we assign the responsibility of approving bridge lights to our county administrator. Back it. Skyway bridge lights. Except for the one we just voted today, because well, uh, I'm going to pass this to Nick don't to write a letter. Don't complicate it, no, it's not. Serbia. Can, can we not just be specific to the Skyway Bridge, but say all bridge lighting? I just don't care what color any of these bridges are. So let's, I'm, I'm let's, leaving my motion the same. If you're lighting up a bridge, I'm okay with Dr. Hope's bridge. making this decision. So I'll keep my second the same. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great idea, personally. All right, I've got to open this to public comment. Anyone want to come forward and speak on this issue? Phone calls? No. Nope. Close in public comment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? It's approved no. unanimous. What? I'm against. Oh. Okay. Um, let me rephrase that, Madam Clerk. <laughs> it is approved five to one with Commissioner Satcher voting nay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I got only a couple more things. Um, we used to, in the old days, Allow citizens, uh, Mr. Oh gosh, he's sitting there looking at me right now. He passed away, but um, we used to allow people to speak under public comment, and they would submit a letter. And as long as it was on file, they wouldn't have to get it every time. And then at one point, the legal counsel changed it. So I don't know if it's a legal reason, but I would ask um, that our legal counsel look at it um, and see if we do have to get the you know, the so many citizens to speak because we did this for a long time and I'm sure some of us remember that, so. Madam Chair, I suggest you address that when you do your rules of procedure because that's, that's where the requirement is. Say. It came from so the board, So maybe we can bring it up attorney. when we're... It, it's on the rules and regulations. Okay. It's a change We could change already. it. Okay, all right. So, and then the well, speech... I, I do have my uh -huh. button pushed. I just wanted to comment. I don't ever remember it not being necessary that they bring in a notice with the oh, signatures. Yeah, it had to be before 2012. Uh, it, it was hasn't for, been, since I've been on the board, you always had to bring in. No, yeah. I remember Mr. Weaver. Weaver. 
There we go. Well, he we always open it. And Sandy Gilbert or Sandy Marshall, he had not one on file for years. Well, it was before I was elected. I can tell you that. But anyway, I, that's why I was asking. I didn't know that. Okay. But yeah, we'll discuss that when we have our workshop. All right, and just one more. I'm bringing up the speed limit on Lorraine Road. Again, I'm still getting letters. Did we need to make a motion to have staff to do a traffic study and see if it can go up higher than 35? Last um, time we just kind of vacillated about it and I didn't know what to tell this person that sent me another email. I can respond to that too. Um, if you talk to Clark Davis, they're already looking into it. Okay, so somebody, well, somebody should done. keep us informed. Okay, thanks. Uh-huh. Anything else, ma'am? Nope, thanks. Okay, I don't have anything. So this meeting is now adjourned.